Well, the greatness of Abraham Lincoln is predicated on the courage and vision of the abolitionist movement that kept the kind of pressure on Abe Lincoln such that he became not simply a run-of-the-mill president during a crucial moment, but a visionary and courageous one who broke the back of white supremacist slavery, who was able to preserve the Union in such a way that the Union could move into a new era with slavery no longer an incubus upon its neck, an albatross around its neck, I should say. And so when you think of Lincoln's first inaugural address, which called for an endorsement of the unamendable amendment, the first proposed 13th Amendment that, that, that said, in fact, that slavery would be permanent in America. Frederick Douglass bought a ticket to go to Haiti when he heard that. Can you imagine if, in fact, there had been a reconciliation between the North and the South with an amendment to the Constitution that said slavery forever? Abe Lincoln supported that. Now, was that pragmatic? Was that opportunistic? Was that unprincipled? For Frederick Douglass, it was barbaric. Lincoln changed his mind. His greatness was that he changed his mind. He supported colonization of black people to send free blacks to Africa or Central America. He changed his mind when he called for black people voting in New Orleans in April 1865. Three days later, white John Wilkes Booth put a bullet through his head. Lincoln's greatness was he grew, he matured, he developed. That's true for each and every one of us. If we're going to be great, we got to grow, we got to develop, we have to mature. So I salute the great Lincoln, but no great Lincoln without the great abolitionist movement. And that's Harriet Tubman, that's Harriet Beecher Stowe, that's Frederick Douglass, that's Wendell Phillips, that's Charles Sumner. That whole movement put pressure on him to make him great.